This is Amethyst Whispers, and this is a soft-spoken coupon binder tutorial. This is the binder that I'm using in order to do the couponing. And if you saw the first video, I was using a box that was too bulky and not very easy to find the coupons that I was looking for when I would make my shopping list with the ads. So now I'm going to be using this one instead. And this one has easy rings, which makes it really easy for the, the sheets to turn in so they won't get caught. But I'm going to leave it open because I don't want it to be too loud in the video if I were to keep opening and closing. I like this binder too because it has pockets, but here we're going to look at the box and everything in this coupon box is going to be taken out and put into the binder system. And you can see this would be really bulky to carry to the stores, so it was good for an initial, um, initial organization, but now we're going to use this. So the first thing you need to do is get a heavy duty binder. And that's important because you're going to be using it a lot. So you want to make sure that it's something that's going to last. This one is a two inch binder, but you'll see a lot of the couponing binders people use are three to five inches. But I think for me right now, this is a good size and I don't want to carry a 5 inch binder. So the 2 inches should be good for now. I also like this binder because of its pockets. It has two pockets on each side, which will help to store and those rings will be really nice. So there's the first pocket, there's the second pocket, the third pocket, and the fourth pocket. And I'm not sure if you can see on the rings, but there's a flat side, which will make it easy for turning. The next thing you'll need are these heavy weight presentation sheet protectors. It's a pack of 25, and the heavy weight are going to be a bit thicker, which is what we need so that they don't get flimsy and uh, stretch and uh, break and tear, which can happen with the really cheap flimsy ones. So that's why I like these heavy weight sheet protectors. And those we're going to use to put divider pages in. And we're also going to use them if we have a full page of coupons or other information that we need to keep in the coupon binder. The next thing you need are trading card holders. This is a pack of 35 and I found these at Target on the bottom shelf underneath all the trading cards which are typically up by the checkouts. I got two packs, 35 in each, so I will have 70 pages to start with, and each hold nine, or each have nine pockets to put coupons. Now, of course, I might have three or four of the same coupon, and all of those will go into the same pocket on the front. So I think that each pack holds 315 cards. You'll also need fine tipped Sharpies and that's to use to write on the divider tabs that we're going to use. And the next thing you'll need, and I, oh, nice that you can see my dirty sock. But I left the divider tabs in the bag, so I had to go get them. But these are the tabs. They're the post-it note tabs. And I found that a pack of these with those heavyweight sheet protectors are actually less expensive 
than if I were to buy the plastic dividers. However, if you want to purchase the plastic dividers, then go ahead. Just make sure you get the plastic ones and not the paper ones because the paper ones will tear with how much you're going to be flipping through these pages. I also like the post-it note ones because they have a really nice adhesive and they will stay on the sheet protector, but they are repositionable. So this is all we need to start the coupon binder. And I didn't get any of these on sale, which I am horrified to say, but it was a little less than $30. So if you could get some of these things on sale, especially if you're shopping more towards uh, the, the school, you know, back to school sales, you might be able to get some really nice deals on some of these things. So now I'm going to get out one of the trading cards holders and I'm having a difficult time because it's really hard to do one-handed because they're quite slippery but I'm trying to hold my phone which is what I'm filming this on and then I'm doing the audio over top of it because the heater in the room was so loud that no matter what I did in my recording program I could not remove the noise to a level that sounded good and without distorting the entire vocals throughout. It sounded very strange, and so I decided just to mute the audio and re-record over top of it. So that's what you're looking at now. And I have no idea why I'm up and why you're seeing the rest of the hotel room here. Clearly something must have fallen off the bed or I'm trying to look at something in the coupon box. I'm very sorry for the video. I'll, maybe I will try to edit some of this out. Because I'm not sure what I was doing there, to be quite honest. I probably should have edited the video first and then put the audio in. But now we're back to the coupon binder and we're going to insert the rest of those trading card pages. And they are quite slippery, but they are pretty heavy duty. So once you get your coupons in, they will stay in and they're not going to really tear. But you can see that right now there's quite a struggle trying to fit them all in and not let go of the phone. I think I'm going to edit this entire section out if I know how. So if it's not edited out, then you know that my skill level is not that good with this with these programs yet. But eventually we're going to get both packs of trading cards inserted and then we'll insert the heavyweight sheet protectors after we get the dividers put on them. And while we're getting to that part, I can tell you that I'm very new to couponing. I really am trying to make this year a year of saving money, of living on a budget, of really kind of reining in our finances. And this one of the steps that I want to take to do that because there are a lot of things that we could get much cheaper if we just use a little bit of time to do things like getting coupons. Finally, we're ready to do 
the sheet protectors. And we're going to have to get those dividers out and place them on. And we'll also get our Sharpie out and then get the Sharpie. See, now they've got a piece of plastic holding them in. This was not the video to do one-handed, I have to tell you, but I was in the hotel. I was on day two of three days of a conference. The conference itself was phenomenal. It was a new intervention that I can use with the parents that I work with and it's a really nice coaching program instead of doing direct therapy so that was really really a good conference but I'm very bored and I'm a little homesick although I feel absolutely pathetic saying that so I thought that I would record the putting together of the coupon binder because I thought it would make a nice little tutorial for those of you who might be interested in doing something like this if you're trying to kind of rein in your budgets at home. And I'm not going to become an extreme couponer by any means. I just want to be able to have a little bit of extra help. So if it's something that I'm already going to buy and it's on sale and I have a coupon for it, I could really cut some money out of the budget and really save some money on groceries. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Some of the blogs that I follow for couponing that I would recommend are hiptosave.com and thecrazycouponlady.com and I'll put both of those in the description box. They both have YouTube channels and post pretty regularly. They're not extreme couponers, and they're pretty energetic and fun to watch. So now I'm getting ready to take those repositionable post-its, and I have a list of every department that I routinely shop in my grocery store, because I'm used to the layout of the grocery store. That's the easiest way for me to organize the binder in order to be able to quickly put the coupons in according to where they would be easily accessible when I'm in the store. So for example, I will pull the coupons that go with my shopping list depending on what store I'm going to, but if I'm in the store and there's something on clearance or on sale, that wasn't advertised, then I'll know exactly what section that I can go into the binder because it's organized by sections in the grocery store. You can choose to organize yours any way that you want. Some different ways of organizing are by date, where you don't cut out the coupons. You just take the insert and file it by date in a sheet protector. And then when it's time to shop, you can check the database on one of those two blogs and they'll tell you what date the coupon is from and what insert it's from. Some people organize them alphabetically by brand name, which is what I did originally. Because that way, whenever you're looking for a particular brand or you're in the store and you see something, then you know you can just pull that from the section it's in alphabetically, but I think that organizing it by the layout of the grocery store and doing it categorically is the easiest. So now I'm going into the coupon box and I'm going into that A envelope and I'm pulling out all of the coupons. The first one is save one dollar off a leave and that is going to go into the pharmacy section of the coupon binder and of course it is the first section that I forgot to make so you don't see it there because I completely forgot 
So what I'll do is just make another tab and luckily it's the next one that would be put in alphabetically. So even though I did the tabs categorically, I still organize them alphabetically in the binder itself. Some choose to organize the tabs on the layout of the store. So the layout of my grocery store is produce, deli, and bakery in one section, followed by frozen foods, followed by alcohol and beverages, followed by breakfast foods, and you could organize them that way as well. So here we have a dollar off frozen Arby's curly fries. So we're going to go into freezer foods, which you can see on that tab. And I have no idea why I called it freezer food and not frozen food, but it means the same. So it's not that big of a deal. But then what we'll do is open up that top pocket and you'll just insert that right in there. But as you can see, it's very difficult to do one-handed. And not all of the coupons fit, so sometimes you're going to have to fold them and bend them to fit into those little pockets, and that's okay. You just want to make sure that you have one of two things showing either the date that it is expiring on, or you want to be able to see the product that the coupon is for. So here we have another frozen food. I think we have three coupons there for some type of a pizza, I think. I'm not sure. And we'll just put those right into the pocket. The middle and bottom pockets are easier to open because they have a little bit of a slit instead of them being the same size on the top where you have to pull them apart. So when I was taking out the cover, I realized it had coupons on the back and they were all for things like markers and crayons, so I am going to give those to my sister because I think she'll really need those for the kids. So it was kind of like an extra bonus. It was really nice. So now I'm going to take you through the completed binder because at this point I have all of my tabs in and all of my coupons are in. So the very first section I put in was free and that might be where you put like a Victoria's Secret card you get in the mail that says a free panty or a Bath and Body Works card that says a free travel size lotion with purchase so that you don't forget to use those if you want them and you might also put rebates in that section. So you can see that I've got baby even though I don't have a baby, I still want to keep the coupons for those things just because my sister has children and I work with a lot of needy families with very young children. All of the children that I see in my full-time job are under the age of three and so a lot of times if I can get things really inexpensively then I'll put them into the donation box for those children. You can see how all the different categories are laid out, like cleaning products, clothing, condiments and peanut butter, dairy and cheese, freezer food, and that's the layout of the coupon binder. So now I'm just still kind of flipping through. You can see all the different coupons that fit, and usually I have more than one. You can see how some of them are folded, and honestly, some of these products I may never use, but that's okay, 
But let's say, for example, that egg beaters, which you see in the middle for a dollar off, let's say that's on sale for a dollar. That means that I can get it for free. And I could begin to use that product, or I could give it to a neighbor who uses that product, or a family member. I have a friend whose son can't eat regular eggs because of an allergy, so I still like to keep coupons that I may not use personally, because if I can get them very inexpensively or free, I can donate those items instead. So here we're just flipping through, flipping through. You can see all the different coupons laid out in the binder. This part, I just wanted you to hear some of the flipping sounds, but unfortunately the background noise just completely obliterated it. So I'm hoping that some of my simulations will help. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that maybe you've decided to try couponing. It's not as bad as the extreme couponers make it look. It does take one to two hours per week from getting the newspaper, looking through the ads, cutting the coupons, organizing them, and then again at the end when you actually go to the store. So thank you for watching. Please click the like button to show your support if you like it. Leave your requests and comments and please subscribe if you'd like to hear more. Bye bye.